One of the myths, the Earth is closer to the sun in the summer. We know that the Earth rotates or orbits the sun. And we also know that the orbit is slightly elliptical. So there is a period where the Earth is further away from the sun. And six months later, it is closer to the sun. So some people believe that makes sense. When the Earth is closest to the sun, that would be summer. And then when it's away from the sun, it's winter. If this is true, then you would see summer worldwide. So the whole Earth will be in summer. And when it's further from the Earth, the whole world will be in winter. What we know is that when the Northern Hemisphere in the summer season, the Southern Hemisphere is in the winter season, this observation falsifies the theory. In fact, Earth is furthest from the sun in July, and it's closest to the sun in January. The, the difference in proximity between July and January is about 5 million kilometers. Uh, as you can see in this picture, the axis makes an angle of 23.5 degrees with the vertical to the plane on which the Earth rotates around the sun. In this picture, the summer is in the northern hemisphere, while the southern hemisphere is in the winter season. The intensity of the sunlight is higher in the northern hemisphere, and also the days are longer. This is what causes the seasons. Proximity plays a factor, but it's very, very small. When you look at a picture of astronauts floating inside the International Space Station or outside and you see them floating, a lot of people think that gravity disappears when we go to outer space. Let's assume that one of the satellites orbiting the Earth suddenly, for some reason, stopped rotating. It would immediately fall down, which means that gravity does exist. And actually, at the altitude of the International Space Station, the gravity only reduces by 11%. The reason why we feel weightless is not because of zero gravity. Your presence with respect to the reference frame, if both of you are falling with the same acceleration in relation to that reference frame you feel weightless this is up an airplane it goes to a certain height then start falling freely while moving at high speed this is like a free fall it's both the plane and the passengers of the plane accelerate down with the same acceleration so with respect to this reference frame they feel weightless so if they are standing on a scale it will record zero there is a difference between weightlessness and zero gravity Another myth that microwave ovens causes cancer. And they connect this to radiation. They say, okay, now microwaves are a form of radiation and, and we are subjecting our food to this radiation. So we know that radiation is bad. So it's true that microwave is a form of radiation. Visible light is also a form of radiation. And radio waves are a form of radiation. All of these are called electromagnetic waves. It's starting from radio waves to gamma rays. Not all of them are harmful. Starting from the ultraviolet rays, which are very short waves, going even to shorter waves towards the X-ray and then to gamma rays, these rays becoming harmful. But before that, they are not. These waves do not have the ability to ionize atoms. This is why we call them non-ionizing radiation. We live under light all our lives, and we don't think light waves are harmful. Microwaves are about 100,000 times weaker than visible light. However, when you start going into ultraviolet, to X-rays, they have the ability to knock electrons out of the atoms. They may change the chemical structure of some compound, which might cause damage to your DNA. And this is why these uh, type of radiation are harmful. Ultraviolet is harmful, but it is less harmful than X-rays, and X-rays is less harmful than gamma rays. Gamma rays are the ones produced in nuclear reactors or nuclear, uh, nu uh, nuclear weapons. Science is a human-made structure that attempts to understand how the physical world works. A scientific theory it must be testable and it must be falsifiable. These two conditions are very important. What is more important than verifying a theory is falsifying it. There must be a test, at least in principle, to prove that a certain theory is wrong. You can have a theory, okay, maybe it made 100 predictions. 99 of them came out as predicted, but the 100th one came out wrong. Then immediately you know that the theory is not correct or at least need to be modified. Here is a theory that survived for centuries that heavier objects fall faster than lighter up until the 17th century when Galileo conducted an experiment where he dropped two objects that have different mass from the Leaning Tower of Pisa and noticed that both of them hit the ground at the same time. And that was kind of a surprise to a lot of people. That single experiment was able to falsify the theory that survived many centuries. Here's an example of another scientific theory. You saw a swan and you found that it's white. You saw another swan and you found it's white, a third swan, and so it's white. Then you say, all swans are white. Okay, is this an acceptable scientific? It is an acceptable scientific theory. You might look at thousand swans or even a million number of swans, and all of them are white, and the theory is still valid. The observation of a single non-white swan is sufficient to falsify the theory or prove that it's incorrect. 
What is pseudoscience? According to the dictionary, it's a system of theories, assumptions, and methods erroneously regarded as scientific. Most of the time, you find it to be appealing emotionally. It doesn't go with the established scientific knowledge or process. And most importantly, it's not falsifiable. Uh, usually, it relies on subjective validation. It's more of a belief than an acceptable scientific theory. Believers show little interest in criteria of valid evidence. Emphasis usually on eyewitnesses that cannot be verified, stories, blurry photos, messages shared on social media, which is not a scientific process of providing evidence for a scientific examples like astrology, ESP, channeling, hypnosis, aliens, UFOs, Bigfoot. They are actually a big business. And this is one probably one of the reasons they survived all these years, despite the advent of science. If we take astrology, for example, it does not have any explanatory power other than chance. There is no evidence the position of stars or the motion of stars have any influence on humans' behavior and human and psychology. A theory that explains events or set of circumstances as the result of a secret plot by usually powerful conspirators. Supporters or believers in these theories adhere to them despite any proof that you can provide otherwise usually thrives during periods of crisis and uncertainties. Sometimes there are political motives repeated by politicians, activists, media organizations for political gains. Some people feel a sense of relief that they don't have the responsibility for major port problems done by external agents and we have nothing to do with it, so we are okay. Start becoming passive. And there is no need to do anything because you cannot. It's out of your control. On the other hand, there are certain group of people who, since we have these theories and we have these Evil agent, we have to fight them. And this sometimes leads to radicalization. In this theory, flat earthers claim that Earth is a flat disk, the North Pole is at the center of the disk, while Antarctica forms an ice wall at the boundaries. And this ice wall is protected by the government and by NASA, and then dismiss all evidence as fabrications. If we take it as a theory, you expect that the horizon will extend all the way. It doesn't matter how far, for example, a ship sails from the port, you will continue to see that ship. Another conspiracy theory which has its supporters that moon landing is fake. The authors claim that NASA, the U.S. government, faked this moon landing. Everything was filmed on Earth. About more than 400,000 people were involved to accomplish the moon landings. Do you think a cover-up would be possible for 50 years? It will be cheaper for just to send to the moon. Global warming is not real, as some conspiracy theories claim. It's just a natural change in the climate. Claims are all based on manipulated data for financial and political reasons. No evidence is provided for these conspiracies. A more recent uh, conspiracy theory, which is that 5G, the upcoming technology for mobile devices, is spread COVID-19. It's very similar to what we discussed about microwaves. Supporters use arguments like the timing of the original cases uh, of COVID-19 in Wuhan and the launch of 5G in a number of Chinese cities is kind of, there is a link between them and correlation. There were many cities that received it and many parts of the world other than China received 5G. Why did it happen only in that particular city? The International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection said that these claims are not supported by any evidence, not even extremely weak evidence. I was watching a, a video by BBC. This is a screenshot on YouTube, video date July 14, 2020. 22% of 16 to 24 years believe there is a link between 5G and COVID-19. If you take the percentage of the dislikes compared to the number of people who rated the video, it comes out to be 22%. Another COVID-19 conspiracy, the virus was engineered and wealthy elites use it to profit from the vaccines. The vaccine is not safe. We hear the terms misinformation and also disinformation. The difference actually is in the intention. Misinformation is people communicate inaccurate information. They believe it is the truth. Now, disinformation is generated with the intention of causing misinformation. They know that this is not correct, but deliberately trying to, to mislead the public through rumors or through fake information. Another tool, which is the relation between correlation and causation. Let's say a statistics of something that increases while this one increases, the other one increases. When this happens, sometimes one of them is causing the other, but sometimes it's not. So it's not necessary for correlation to imply causation. I'll give an example. Let's assume that ice cream sales is correlated with homicides and drowning accidents in New York. If you look at the statistics of ice cream sales and also the statistics of homicides and drownings, you find that they are correlated, meaning that when the ice cream sales increases, drowning accident increases also at the same rate. Can we conclude that ice cream sales causes death of people? This is sometimes the logic used by in pseudoscience. However, if you do 
comprehensive research of this issue, found you find the following: that on sunny days, there is more people are buying ice cream, more people go swimming, more people go out. So when more people go swimming, there will be more people drowning. More people going out, there's more homicide. So from the here, you can see that ice cream sales, drowning, it's, it's, it, they are correlated, but they are not causing each other. Why people fall for these informations? People favoring information that are consistent with pre-existing beliefs. This is called confirmation bias. The education system, the old theory, the behaviorist theory, models the brain like a pot, and the teacher it filled that pot with information. However, the constructive theory, which is the more recent one, says people already come with preconceptions. So knowledge, you can look at it as a structure within the brain of the student. You have to engage with the old structure. Otherwise, student will just memorize what you gave them, leave the classroom, put it in the exam, and they forget about it. Because sometimes lecturing end up to be that way. Movies. It's important to realize that a movie is not a science project. A movie is a work of art or a fantasy. The purpose of the movie is to cause entertainment. Uh, for example, you find spaceships move and fight in outer space with spectacular sound effects where sound waves kind of propagate. People jump from high-speed in cars and trains and fall safely. Scientifically, this is not possible. Social media. It's a very effective tool for reaching a wider audience more quickly. Knowledge at your fingertips. With few clicks, you can find the answer to so many questions. The downside is that it's a tool for spreading misinformation more quickly. The dissemination of information is no longer top-down. Anybody can generate a story, share it, and it might go viral. There is no authentication, no peer review. Anybody can be a broadcaster of information. Fake information, conspiracy theory, existed for a long time. The social media provide a tool for amplifying. Instead of talking to my neighbors and my classmates and uh, my colleagues at work, now you can talk to the whole world. It helped form virtual community. Sometimes I have strange theories about something. I find it difficult to find other people who have the same beliefs as you. If you resort to, to social media, most probably you'll find others somewhere in the world who support you in that, and you can start forming communities and these communities start growing. How risky is fake science? First of all, it can have serious consequences, especially when supported by individuals of agencies considered influential. Celebrities who have millions of followers acted like super spreaders and in just one tweet reached millions of people at the same time. So influential people can direct people in the wrong direction. One of the downsides is declining scientific levels because people are basically are consuming junk information. People in the past used to have malnutrition because they didn't have food. Now, people have all types of food, but they still have malnutrition because they choose to eat junk food. One of the downsides is less trust in science. And also, especially believers in conspiracy theory reduce their trust in democratic institutions and the democratic ways of making change. Uh, it distracts the public from the real problems like climate change, social, and social justice. And the list goes on. Everyone has a duty. So start with yourself. Educate yourself about science and scientific process. It's very important. Learn and practice critical and analytical thinking. Critical thinking is very important in order to weigh any information you receive before you share it with, with anybody else. Develop an evidential style of belief. If someone claims something, say, okay, what's your, what's your evidence? Even if it's a celebrity who said that, it doesn't mean that a celebrity is an expert in that field. So always look at the source. Check if the information received is consistent. These theories, because they are not based on a solid evidence, they are not consistent with each other. Sometimes you find a piece of information is contradicting another one. Do not share any unverified information because correcting misinformation is not an easy task. For example, there are some aliens who visited the Earth. Now, how come these stories only appear in these fragmented stories on certain websites by certain people? While all these universities and research centers and the governments and spy agencies, all of them, they are not aware of it. It doesn't make sense. 